Alright, what do you think of Freddy Fazbear? So, for this specific video, I decided to build a Freddy of the Fazbear variety because I felt his design is simple enough and it can be altered to make almost any FNAF character, I think. This is probably the first of a bunch of videos I'll do like this. I do listen to you guys, so if you'd like to see me build anything that I haven't built before, please tell me. I will consider it, maybe. Maybe. Before we get into this, I'm just gonna say that the base of this build is made from polyfoam, so it's a very soft head. Different cosplay is usually made from different kinds of foams, like EVA foam and craft foam and, um... Uh, there, there, there's a lot of different foams, I can't name them, but polyfoam, I use this one the most, it's very soft, and the, it's commonly used in fursuits, and I recommend it for beginners, because that, that's how I started. I'll get into some more videos on how I use EVA foam and patterns and all these other kind of things later on, but this should be a good start, I think. So, let's get into it. So, this process working with polyfoam is mostly just putting foam together and then cutting out a gigantic shape. It really isn't that hard. So the way I usually start these things is I'll make a bucket shape with a half sphere on top. And it does involve a bit of math. I won't exactly talk about the math here because I'd be explaining it for about like, you know, four minutes. So, uh, here's this diagram I made that might help you. So, after we got the main part cut out, we go ahead and start gluing it together with either hot glue or contact cement. I like to use contact cement because it works with foam a little bit more in my opinion. But hot glue is also an option, so feel free to use that if you want to. Now that everything's glued, it's just a matter of cutting it down to the size you want. Since this is only for Freddy's top jaw, I didn't want it to be too big, so I ended up cutting off about half of the shape. And then because I was bored, I ended up just drawing the face on there to get an idea of what it'll look like. Now I'm just layering on extra layers of foam to start building out the shape. In total, I ended up adding about three extra layers on the sides and two on the head to make the forehead look slightly bigger. But literally, this entire process is just eyeballing. I made a rough idea of what I wanted the cheeks to look like so I could make symmetrical pads to put on both sides of the face. Again, I'm just eyeballing, but trying to be symmetrical doesn't hurt at all. And I'm using my electric turkey carving knife here. I also use scissors. Using an electric knife is a lot easier because with just scissors you'll be doing this for hours. I only recently learned how to use a turkey carving knife and it isn't hard to learn. But it's great for cutting off big pieces out of blocks. It's really really expedited my process of making things. And I only learned it last year! So to get some of these parts symmetrical, you can also see I use a ruler to get certain parts right. It's not required, but I like to try to get things as symmetrical as possible, and if you're not that experienced, I highly recommend at least trying it. Another one of my tricks I learned recently is to make things look smoother and not have to carve them out. I'll cut out big pieces and I'll bevel the sides and glue them on with the contact cement, and it makes them look super smooth in the end, like how I'm doing at the back of the head here. So for the muzzle here, I just ended up making a big cube and adding foam onto it and carving it. I also used my trick of just beveling extra pieces of foam and gluing them on. So at this point, once I'm just adding on extra pieces and getting those details right, I start using scissors more to get smoother areas on the cheeks. It also helps with the beveling technique just to make things look a little bit more cohesive.
To make a moving jaw, I decided to make the mechanism out of foam board and Chicago screws. First thing I did was make a pattern for the side of the jaw to cut out of the foam board. Then after cutting out the shapes, I drilled a hole through the three pieces I made and put Chicago screws through them. After screwing them in, the motion is there. So, I just need to duplicate the shape and then fasten the screws. For the actual foam bit of the jaw, I just glued a bunch of pieces together and then cut some slits in the top to glue in the foam board. I also went over everything with scissors just to get some more defined shapes in the chin area. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it in the end, I think. I glued the foam board in just using some hot glue, and then after getting the bo both of after getting both of the pieces in the jaw, I cut some slits in the top part of the jaw too, and then also used hot glue to input them in there. I didn't glue the pieces into the top jaw yet though. I'm waiting until I actually fur the jaw so I can just have the parts separate because it's a lot easier to work that way. At this part of the process, I'm patterning out the hat. I wanted to build it out of polyfoam, so I'm just making the idea of how I can trace it onto the foam. I ended up putting an extra layer around the top part of the hat, just to make it slightly bigger. And then once I was satisfied with the shape, I went ahead and started patterning out how I wanted it to look with the velvet over it. I used a white marker to trace onto the velvet so I'd actually see what I was working with. I didn't end up sewing much, but if you're good at hand sewing, I recommend you just sew the entire thing instead of gluing it like I did. For the nose, I added contact cement to the foam and the velvet and just stretched it on. So now we're on to the furring. Personally, this is the hardest process for me, it's always been. I only recently learned how to sew with a sewing machine, so that's what I'm using to do all this. The material I'm using for this is minky fur. I like to use two-sided minky fabric since it tends to be a little bit stretchy. And also, it looks exactly like the texture from the first game, so that's also an added bonus, I think. I have another video I made a while back that went over my furring process with Springtrap, which was made from fleece fabric, and that might help out to anybody working with different materials. And now it's time for patterning. I made a video on this a little while back, you can actually go check it out here. I only pattern half of it, and then I cut it in half, so when I put it onto the fabric, I just mirror it and then trace it. For me, it just helps with making the shapes more symmetrical. Once you sew all the pieces back together, you'll have a big fabric sleeve that you can pull over the original foam piece that you got the pattern from. And then from there, I usually just use hot glue and glue it on, which is what I'm doing here. So the way I usually glue on these kind of things is I'll start from the front where there shouldn't be any seams showing. So any seams that I end up having the glue on the back will just be hidden. I usually start off with hot glue from the front, but in this process I ended up switching the contact cement for the back part. I tried my best to glue around the foam board pieces so none of those would get stuck with the glue, and I did a pretty good job with that, though I did mess up just a little bit, but that's just how it goes with these kind of things. And I also like to put a small layer of extra fabric around the rim of the inside of the jaw, just so there isn't any, like, clumps around your face. Now it's time to start patterning the top part of the head. I'm patterning only half of it again with the plastic wrap and duct tape. After sewing the sleeve I patterned, I went ahead and started pinning everything down to get the shape since it's a bigger area, and then now it's just a matter of actually hot gluing it down. Gluing the fabric from the head, I decided to start from the back and then go to the front because I could just stretch it down and cut off any of the excess at the muzzle. Now that the main parts of the fabric are all glued down, now I gotta start stretching it around to actually wrap up around the bottom of the head. To prevent the fabric from creasing too much, I like to cut little triangles and parts that I don't need. After I glued in the fabric to the eye sockets, I went ahead and started testing with the plastic cups I usually use for the eyes. I like using plastic cups because you can just insert the acrylic eyes into them and pose them around. And just that option to move the eyes around is something I like to add anyway.
Now all the furring on the top jaw is almost done, we just gotta do the muzzle. I just made a simple pattern then sewed it together in like 5 minutes. I also use hot glue to apply the muzzle fabric to the head. The hardest part is getting the edges to look right, since there is two different fabrics. I've seen some people sew the two fabrics together, which can work. I just like gluing it more because it takes less time. Now I'm installing the jaw to the top jaw by cutting some holes and gluing it in. And now I'm back to finalizing the eyes. So to get them to look right, I did have to cut off a bit of the plastic cups. So as soon as you got them properly sized, then you just gotta paint them and they should be ready. For the ears, I just made a simple pattern and made it like a sock, so I just pulled it over the foam. And then I just glued it in from the inside of the ear outwards. To go the extra mile with the character, I decided to get some LEDs to put inside the mouth. I ended up just making some simple EVA foam pieces for both the ears and the grill I wanted to put the lights in. To get the EVA foam to fit in the ears, I just cut some slits in the bottom to put it into. To get the paint to properly stick to the EVA foam, I like to heat seal it with my heat gun. It just gives the final effect a lot more of a shiny look. Now I'm painting the pupils onto some paper. So you could just print them out, like, directly. But I decided to paint them because my printer wasn't working correctly. And I think I'm pretty happy with the results, so I recommend this process if you got the paint to try it. To paint the metal parts, I use FX Paint. It is definitely my favorite paint to use for this kind of stuff. It's a little bit pricey, but I super highly recommend it. After the paint was dry, I went ahead and cut out the pupils. For this, I decided to just directly glue them to the acrylic ornaments I usually use. I don't recommend super glue for attaching those, I think just clear Elmer's glue works perfect. After spray painting the cups I made for the eye socket, I went ahead and just started placing them where I wanted them to go and coated them in contact cement. I also put some contact cement around the rim of the cup and the inside of the eye just so it would stick better. I try not to use too much contact cement because I'm pretty sure it can melt the plastic. I think mine melt a tiny bit, but it ended up just being okay. Now I'm basically just gluing everything together. Here I'm starting to cut out the eyebrows, which are also made of EVA foam. I glued the velvet onto the EVA foam eyebrows using just hot glue and contact cement. I cut off the excess just with scissors, not really doing much to the side, because velvet usually just meshes in pretty well. Just make sure to glue it on so it's really tacky on all surfaces. And the last thing you want is velvet coming up at the seams. To get the eyes the right color, I just ended up spray painting them. I coated the back of the painted pupils with some Mod Podge just so the spray paint wouldn't mess with it. The color I ended up going with was just an off-white yellow just to keep that kind of old looking plastic effect. After my first test run for the eye socket was done drying, I went ahead and just started installing the second one. I was also just kind of looking at everything coming together too. After both the eye sockets were put in, I went ahead and just started gluing on the nose with some contact cement. And then I just hot glued the eyebrows on just to get them out of the way. I also just cut out some small EVA foam teeth behind the scenes and spray painted them when I spray painted the eyes with the same spray paint. To give the teeth extra support, I ended up just cutting small holes in the bottoms and small holes in the bottoms and then gluing in some sewing pins. The extra support just really helps so they're not as wiggly. I've had teeth fall out in my past costumes before and it is not fun trying to find them at conventions. To make sure the vision would be through the mouth, I add an extra foam sheet to push my vision down to the mouth. I went ahead and fastened in the grill too. And then now that the paint was done drying on the eyes, I went ahead and put the two pieces together using super glue, and they're practically done. So this part of the process is completely optional, but I do it anyway just in case I want to sell any of my heads. I go ahead and line the inside of my heads with just some of the fabric I've already been using, just excess scraps and stuff, just so it's softer in the inside and it feels nicer to wear. One of the final additions I added was just some elastic to keep the wearer's head in place. Again, completely optional, but I did it anyway. So the final part of the process now is just airbrushing. This isn't really something that's too accessible to everybody, but if you've got the materials to do so, I highly recommend just trying it out. 
I usually start with a brown just to go over everything and make it look kind of dirty. But with this, I did a very light coat of brown and then I'm just doing a lot of blacks like in the Help Wanted model. Really, it's just to make shadows look shadowier and to make details just pop out a lot more. The biggest things I put emphasis on were around the jaw, on top of the cheeks, and then also around the muzzle. You can also get a similar effect by just sponging on acrylic paint, but since I have an airbrush, I just use airbrush. And finally, after about four days of work, the head is done. Here's some footage of me actually trying on the head for the first time. My vision is through the mouth, like I said before. I'm really happy with the way it ended up coming out, but I feel like I could have done a little bit more for the moving jaw. But the motion works for how fast I built it. If there's enough demand for it, I'll probably just make a video in the future on how I do moving jaws for like different kinds of things. So I really hope this tutorial can at least help some of you guys. I know this has been a long time coming, I haven't really done a good video like this in a long long time. And I do plan to do more. Like I said, I listen to you guys, so please tell me what you'd like to see in the comments. Now that this is done, I'm gonna go back to working on my secret project, which is Glamrock Freddy. Which isn't really secret now I say it out loud, but... Oh, whatever. Um, I'll see you guys on the flip side. Oh, I almost forgot to say, I wanted to say thank you for the tremendous amount of support recently still. Uh, so I made a gift for you guys, so uh, here it is, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>